Hello everyone, uh, my name is Evan, Orca Bird in the Discord channel, and I just finished a, a very massive project with school. Uh, I was the lead audio integrator on a video game that we made in conjunction with another university. Uh, we did the whole project in around six months. There were almost 60 people working on it, and the game is now out on Steam. And it's gotten some pretty good reviews, and since I noticed that in this channel, uh, not only is it about game dev, but there's a lot of stuff about music, uh, but there isn't so much about sound design, sound integration, and specifically middleware softwares like WISE and FMOD, uh, what they are, how they can be used, and uh, what are some cool things that you can do with them. So I figured I would, you know, share my experience with that and just kind of show you guys what the, the WISE project for a small between 20 to 30 minute game looks like when you do nothing but that for about six months. So uh, let's, let's get right into it. Uh, the game is called Shadow Burglar. It is currently out on Steam and it's a stealth game. And so how the game was made is it was made in the Unreal Engine 4 with the dev team handling most of the programming and the audio team handling uh, the audio integration with this middleware software called WISE. So what is WISE? WISE, uh, for those who, who don't know, I'm sure some of you already do, but if you don't, it is, a, it is a middleware audio integration software. So what you do with it is you hook it up to your Unreal project or your Unity project. Um, and instead of um, let's say dir directly integrating sound uh, into your game as you would in like a game jam, for example. You'll take an audio file and attach it to an animation of a character's footstep and then the animation will play every time, or the animation every time it gets to the footstep, it'll play a footstep sound. Uh, instead, what you can do is uh, you use these things called events that are sent in by the middleware software and the game engine will trigger those events instead of audio. What is the advantage of this? Well, the advantage of this is that you only have to place the events once and then they're done and you don't have to touch them again. Uh, whereas, for example, if you wanted to, if you placed a footstep sound directly onto an animation, and then you wanted to tweak it or you wanted to um, add a couple of EQs or reverbs, you might have to completely route it into a different channel, which could be a pain, especially in something like Unity, or you might have to just re remix the whole footstep sound and then re-import it and then replace it. Whereas a lot of that stuff can just be done directly in WISE from the middleware software, uh, and it has a layout that is specifically designed to uh, to accommodate that kind of work without necessarily having to change any of the integration aspects of it. So in the long run, even though the setup is a little bit complicated, the, the benefits for it become enormous, especially because for a game like this, there are almost 900 individual audio tracks for reasons that I'll get into later just for the music. Uh, the dialogue, there are also like almost 150 to 200 tracks. And then the sound effects themselves, there are a couple hundred. And so having to constantly keep track of all of those in a project that is not specifically designed to, to do that, like Unity, uh, and, and to an extent Unreal as well, can be a huge pain. Uh, the other advantage that, that Wise has is that you can do a lot of stuff in it that you can't, that you just straight up cannot do in engines like Unreal or Unity without custom coding and custom scripts. Effectively, all that WISE does is those events that I talked about earlier that you place onto an animation or you place into a function or a trigger or whatever, uh, they basically just read off of a TXT file that is generated by the software and read uh, read by the game. So the way that it works is you do all your work in WISE, you do all your work in here, uh, and you edit your sounds and you 
sequence them and you make your transitions and you make it all sound really nice and you design your master buses and stuff like that. And then once all that's done, you go to a thing called sound banks and you generate uh, what is called a sound bank. And it's effectively a TXT file that is read by the game that will take the folder full of uh, audio files that you have. And then using... Uh, and then using that folder full of audio files and the text file that it generates, it'll play them according to the specifications that you set in the uh, in in the in in the middleware software. So uh, let's get right into it. I'll talk first about the sound effects, then the dialogue, and then the interactive music system, which was what I primarily worked on. I was the the voiceover and music integration specialist, and I also did a couple of um, a couple of uh, things for the sound effects and the designing the, the hierarchy system for the buses. So starting with the sound effects, what we have here is we have this thing called uh, the, uh, the Audio Project Explorer or the Project Audio Explorer. And in it, we have two things. We have the interactive music hierarchy, which uh, manages the interactive music. And we have the actor mixer hierarchy, which interacts and manages uh, everything that is sound effects or dialogue lines. So if you open this up, we have some categories. Uh, I should, I guess I should probably explain how the, the game works. Uh, the game is a stealth game, and your job is to, to sneak around in this little noir-esque filled corridor filled 3D world and try and avoid getting spotted by guards with the help of the supernatural power that you have in the form of your dead brother's ghost spoiler alert for whoever uh plays the game and takes longer than a single session to finish it um and the way that the game works is uh your your ghost power projections almost work like venom uh the the character so in the in light when you have a light shown on you, your character sprite and your abilities are that of the, the human woman that, that you are. And then when you enter into the shadows or there's no light being on you, your character sprite transforms into this little Splatoon inkling like ghastly shadow creature that slithers around on the floor and has a couple of different moves like teleportation and being able to drag guards into the shadow realm to be tormented for all eternity. But we swear the game is very lighthearted. So, uh, those are the core mechanics of the game. Uh, and so, of course, what you need are, uh, for as far as sounds go, you need things to give the guards a little bit of life, to give the rooms a little bit of texture. You need foley for gene and movement options for the shadow. You also need UI and UX design sounds, so like selection clicks for when you're uh, when you click a button or when you turn off a light or when you chatter something or when you start a record player. Just like you know, something to give the player feedback that they've uh, that they've successfully completed the action that you asked the the player character to complete. And so here in the guards, we have guard foley. Here are a couple of footstep sounds for wood, stone, metal, and gravel. Uh, these things that you see right here, they're called random containers. They're basically a container that you can, uh, you can trigger the container to play instead of the individual sounds. And then within this container, you can randomize, it'll randomly play any one of these 12 footstep sounds uh, and in the container itself, you can adjust the pitch, you can randomize the pitch, uh, and say that there is a uh, maximum offset of, let's say, a couple, like 200 cents going down and 200 cents going up. You can uh, change the play mode to be continuous, to have everything loop. You can, uh, you can avoid the last repeating three footsteps, two footsteps, one footstep. There's tons and tons of stuff that you can do with uh, random containers. Uh, footsteps also have this thing called... Uh, Wise also has this thing called a switch uh, system, which allows different tiles in Unity, like floor tiles or surface tiles, 
to send switch information to Wise. And so this is called a switch container. And depending on which surface you're on, it will play a different sound depending on which, which surface that is. So here the switch container assigns that every time you're standing on something that sends it the gravel information, uh, it'll play the footsteps that sound like they're on gravel. And every time you're standing on uh, a tile that sends wise the metal information or the metal switch, you'll hear a metal footstep sound. And it'll uh, the switches are associated with their objects in, in space, so you don't have to worry about um, manually placing these or like where the sound is going to come from. It's all going to come from the, the right place just based on how the switch system works. You'll also have a couple of Foley breaths, uh, which are very hard to, to hear. They're, they're not very loud. But just to give the guards a little bit of life as they're walking around and uh, make them seem a little bit less like static, immovable objects. You also have some stuff like, you know, pausing, clicking, unpausing sounds. Sounds for the different player characters. So here are some sounds that play when you teleport as the shadow. And so here you have another menu container playing a couple of various different <laughs> sound effect noises uh, with a little bit of um, just a little bit of like EQ work done on them normally uh, before we imported them into the project. Inside this thing called a, a blend track, which is effectively just uh, it plays multiple things at the same time. Uh, these are really good for uh, ambient sound effects for a reason that I won't get into now. There, there are a million things that you can do with the software. Uh, this is kind of just a brief overview of how this project works. Uh, and we already talked about uh, UI, but so here's um, some, some sound effects for objects. And so there are some vortexes that pop up here and there in the game, and so each of these is attached to the game object in-game, attenuated, uh, meaning uh, attenuated to the object, meaning that like the closer you are to the object, the, the more you'll hear it, and the further you are from the object, the further away you'll hear it, and like the softer it'll be. And it's also directional. You can, uh, you can check in positioning here. You have 3D spatialization, position, and orientation. Uh, the attenuation is we have set as guard attenuation, and you can edit it, and you can see that this is the, uh, or maybe you can't see it here. I'll, I'll drag it into the project so it's a little bit uh, actually visible. But what you could do is you can, you can graph uh, how loud and how quiet you want to be with how far away you get. And so you have direct control over that. You also have direct control over whether or not you want your uh, audio to be like to have cone spatialization. So like if you're standing directly in front of it and you're facing the object, you'll get the full view. Whereas if you're standing uh, in front of the object, but you're facing the side, you'll get the side view or you'll get the side audio. And uh, if you're if it's behind you, uh, the player character, you'll hear it behind you in your headphones. Uh, so attenuation is a really cool thing that you could do with Wise that's really, really easy to implement. So much, so much, so much easier than in uh, Unreal, and I haven't even tried to do attenuation in Unity. It just sounds like a nightmare. Uh, so here are some more objects. Um, before we get into the dialogue, I'll take you through how events work. Events work super, super simply. So these are the things that uh, are triggered by the game. And the way that this works is, say, for example, instead of associating a sound effect onto uh, the function to open up the pause menu, instead you just have a, uh, an event that is triggered instead of a sound. So the, the, the game will trigger this game pause event. 
and it will this event will set the the game state to pause which you know i'll get into what that is later but it'll play this pause sound just like that and then when you unpause it'll play the unpause sound and you can change these sounds just by you can you can just like drag and drop them into the project like that uh, and you can just drag and drag and drop them and alter them if you alter if you alter the the clicking sound like for example if i were to uh say that unpause i don't like the way that it's like it's not long enough i want it to have a little bit more of a of a tail so i would go here or i wouldn't go here because it's already pretty short but uh, i could if it was too long and i wanted to shorten it i could shorten it here directly in the audio editor i would be able to go to settings and i would be able to like add a reverb bus uh to it here and just make it sound a little bit uh a little bit spacier and then it would update directly into uh into the event so it makes the process of working uh, on on integrating audio into games that much faster because you don't have to redo everything every single time that you change anything in the anything from the audio in the project uh, for dialogue we have uh, almost 200 lines of dialogue not all of them were used a lot of them were multiple takes but we could still keep those in uh in the project and we can just kind of like check them on and off like this so all the ones that are checked off are not being used and all the ones that are checked on are the ones that are in the game we're in let's get the painting and get out and then here is the the voice that the shadow has it's very similar to how uh how the the dialogue system in transistor works but um i'm not sure if uh, if anyone's played the the game from supergiant uh, Transistor has a like. You don't think you have any sort of special like powers now, do you? Kind of floating in the background of the character, um, and so it's like Transistor if the protagonist from from Transistor uh, actually spoke throughout the game. And the way that the dialogue system works is it works with events. Every single level has uh, scripted narrative dialogue events that are placed throughout the, the level. And uh, each line is triggered individually so that we can get the closed captions to time exactly right. And so every one of these dialogue options that we've used uh, needed its own custom event. Now, one of the, the, the great things about WISE is that if you were to do this in Unity, you would kind of have to like create all of these individually and then also assign them. But what you could do is you can kind of just right click all the ones that you want to take and um, you can do a, a batch new event, one per object play and it'll uh, make events automatically as a as a batch function that are just the title of the audio segment that you have and then you can also batch rename them if it doesn't fit your specifications by hitting control uh f2 so that super 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 useful all the all the batch functions in in wise like the 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 cool audio stuff that you could do with this software is really, really nice. The batch editing functions of this software are a lifesaver because there are some things, there's a, especially in the music uh, system, which is what I, I know the best because it's what I spent the most amount of time on. The the batch editing system of, of Wise is so, so useful that this game may have taken me a year and a half to do if I had to integrate all of this audio directly into, into Unreal Engine. Uh, so those are the dialogue systems. Before we get into the music system, uh, I'd like to talk about routing because routing is really important to how the music system works. And if we want to understand how it is, I kind of have to explain it a little bit here in audio. 
uh, you have the master mixer hierarchy, and you can create various different kinds of buses. So we have the sound effects bus, the music bus, and the dialogue bus. Each of these, by the way, are uh, are attached to the the sliders that you see in the option menu through things called RTPCs, which are incredibly useful things that I'm not going to talk about, but they're basically just numbers that the game sends to unreal uh, that the game sends to Wise that Wise will then be able to use as a reference point to change various different parts of a of a track. A good example for this is like uh, how close the player is to getting spotted or like how stressed the player is by like their proximity to a bunch of guards you can associate that number with the volume of a specific sound effect so that it becomes more tense the closer you get uh and the way that uh that buses work uh is you have these two things called uh called normal buses and then auxiliary buses Auxiliary buses are really good for sound effects because, for example, this one is a reverb track, which just has a reverb on it. And this is just the standard room reverb that we'll use throughout the game. And you can see that every sound in the game that is a sound effect is routed through this reverb track to go into the SFX bus. And then also has this like little thing. Uh, over here saying that at minus 10 and what that means is that every single one of these sound effects is routed through a reverb track so they all have exactly the same reverb and you can change how much individual reverb each sound effect has just by going into the object itself and dragging how much of the reverb it gets down or up and then if you change the reverb track, if you change the reverb that's on the reverb track, all the reverbs adjust for all the sound effects because they're all being routed through this one track. So super useful. For the music system, uh, we, w we went for like, because it's noir and it's a spy thing and you're sneaking around, so we went for a jazz ensemble with a bunch of horns and stingers and a soloist. Uh, a soloist we have, I think like every song in the game there's only three because it's a short game but every song has i think like six or seven saxophone solos that play in a modular way and that'll transition between each other and so every single instrument gets its own routing bus so we can mix them individually in real time and also so that we can play around with the modularity. So like, for example, if, uh, if a music track is playing, we'll be able to assign that, okay, this time it plays through, we'll randomly play piano one instead of piano two, and the next time we'll play piano two, and that'll change every time a listener plays the, the game. Uh, same thing with uh, this, this time as we go through the piece of music, We'll, uh, we'll play saxophone one, and then the next time we'll play clarinet two, and then the next time we'll play saxophone four. And that'll change depending on... Uh, it'll change basically every time that you listen to the music because it's randomly decided that. And so um, if you associate... If you'd have, like, multiple takes of the same song, you can kind of add in a little element of modularity to that using the music bus system, which is exactly what we did. So getting into the music bus system, uh, this is, here we go. This is what we call the sound caster. Uh, and you guys can uh, hear, listen to a little bit of the music that we have and the system that's going on. So there are two states in the game. Either you are not caught or you are caught and you have to run away from a guard. And so this is how we distinguish between these two states. So this is the music, nice, creepy, spooky. This is all this brown stuff that you're seeing over here. And say, for example, you get spotted by a guard. What happens? This happens. Stop!
this like more upbeat kind of jazz. And then if you escape the guards, I lost it switches her. back. And then you get caught again. Stop right there. Stop. I lost her. Stop right there. Hmm. What a weird thing that's going on. I lost her. Hey, you can't be there! There was some weird bug there. No, it works in game, so... Probably just an error with the sound caster. I lost her. Stop right there! I lost her. And so if you'll notice, excuse me while well, I was troubleshooting there, uh, if you'll notice how this game system works, is that you have two states that will be able to transition into each other cleanly, but the songs um, are very tonal because they're, they're jazz tunes, right? And so we have to solo over them and they have to have like chords defined in a specific way. They're not uh, music, they are music loops, but they're not simple music loops, and they're not ambient music either. So how do you know which chords are going to be playing at the time when you get caught, and how the your musical stingers that inform you that you've been caught, which are the horns that you hear over here? Stop! Yeah. How can you... That horn is going to be on and so the way that we went about doing that is moving back to the the music segment editor we have our interactive music hierarchy here this is level two and we have two tracks we have explore and we have spotted and so within each of these tracks which in each of these music segments they're all ordered and separated by chords, so B flat, F, D, B flat, F, D, D, E, D, E, e minor 7 flat, 5, B flat, F. And then uh, each of these, within each of these individual segments, there is the rhythm section, and then there's like four to seven takes of saxophone and clarinet that are all going to be muted depending on like which, which track is randomly chosen by the software to play uh, to, to play whichever time you're listening to the music. So if we play through this explore segment one time, you'll actually be able to say it, see it here. You could see the state right now is clarinet two. If you start explore, changes to saxophone four. And then if you start it again, changes to clarinet three. And so now clarinet three is going to play. And then if you start it again, it'll be saxophone one. And then there's the spotted music, which is the more energetic, energetic music that you get with the snaps. And what we can do is we can actually set custom transitions between all of them. And so here, every time this like segment number one transitions to spotted, you get to transition to it at the next beat, jumping to a specific playlist item that is the exact same time as the playing segment. And so in this instance, we are jumping to the analogous segment in Spotted Music and using a custom transition that we have uh, laid out for here. And the custom transition, so this would be B flat minor. And so the transition we're using is 
B flat minor. And we have those for every chord, for every piece in the game. And then, so this is why there's over 900 tracks of music, because we need two times the saxophone segments. Uh, those saxophone segments, by the way, they're exactly the same in each, uh, in each uh, playlist. If, if you want to call it that. So in each playlist over here, all the saxophone takes are exactly the same. So when you transition from Explore to Spotted, you crossfade into the same saxophone track that's playing and you get exactly the same solo over a different, um, over a different accompaniment background, which is really cool. And so, yeah, that is uh, a little overview of wise i did not get to everything because the software is incredibly complicated but it's also incredibly useful and uh it's actually not that expensive if you want the full version of this thing i think it costs somewhere between 750 dollars to a thousand dollars for your game if you want the full version and also access to the audio kinetic audio team which is like the composers and the sound designers that work at the company it costs 20 grand we don't do that because why would we do that? But companies that companies that don't necessarily want to outsource their audio work will pay the twenty grand to have uh, audio kinetic work on their game audio for them. But if you you could even use this for free uh, with a maximum cap of five hundred uh, audio tracks in your in your project. If you wanted to pay for the full version, it's only seven hundred and fifty to a thousand dollars for the game. But if you wanted to use it for like a game jam or something, you absolutely could because it's completely free up to a cap of five hundred sounds, which you know for this game is not a lot. But if you're efficient about it and you don't try and do crazy audio stuff like we did because we did this. Uh, because it was fun, but also as a school project. If you're not trying to do crazy audio stuff, 500 sounds is is more than enough for a lot of uh, small projects. So that's it. If, uh, if anyone wants to know any more about this project uh, or like how it was done or like more intricate stuff about WISE because there's a ton of stuff, uh, spatial audio, like 3D positioning, uh, cust like custom transitions in the music hierarchy, generative music, you can do a lot of cool stuff with generative ambient music and wise, things about uh, any of the game syncs that we have, so RTPCs, the different states that were used, uh, how the integration is done in Unreal and in Unity. Uh, in Unity, it's fairly complicated sometimes. In Unreal, it's much more straightforward. It's a lot of dragging and dropping into blueprint editors. Uh, anything about... Um, how WISE compresses its audio because it compresses it very efficiently, uh, how the sound banks work and generations and stuff like that. Don't hesitate to ask or to reach out. Uh, and if you want to play the game, go and play the game. It's free. It takes 30 minutes to, to, to beat the whole thing. And it's just a really good time uh, if, you are, if you're in the mood for 35 minutes to kill. Uh, thank you very much and have a good one.